This video is about sampling distributions. Let's examine a question. You are conducting a new prostate cancer drug trial and have noticed that the average red blood cell count for your 500 male participants of 5.34 million red blood cells per microliter of blood is a little lower than the population average for males of 5.4 million cells per microliter. You know the population standard deviation is 0.35 million cells per microliter, so you are curious. What is the probability that you would see an average of 5.34 million in your drug sample, and is this something you should be concerned about? So what is this question asking us? We know from the, ant the question that the average male has 5.4 million red blood cells per microliter of blood. This is our population mean. We also know that there's a standard deviation of 0.35. So we know that it looks something like this, etc., etc. So we are curious here, is what we're seeing in our sample of 500 men, 5.34 million cells instead of 5.44 for our average, is that unusual? Is that something that we could imagine to be noise? Is it reasonable for us to see this? Or is this something that really we should be concerned about, given the fact that it's lower than the population of average of 5.4? To do this, what we want to use is something called a sampling distribution. And we want to imagine that if we were to draw repeated samples of 500 men over and over from the population, what would our distribution look like? Remember, this is the population over here, which means this is billions of men, technically, that we're looking at because we're talking about the average of all men. So if we have 500 people in our sample and we were to draw repeated samples of 500, what would our distribution look like? Well, we know a couple of things. When we have a sampling distribution like this, according to the central limit theorem, our sample is still going to be centered at the population average. But what's going to change is our standard deviation. And in this case, our standard deviation is going to be equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. In this case, our sample size is going to be equal to 500. So we're going to be looking here at 0.35 divided by the square root of 500 and this number happens to work out to be 0.016. So in our case, it's actually a very different kind of distribution because it's a very sm a much smaller standard deviation here. So this is 5.56, etc. Much smaller than we had over here in our population version. So, if this is the case, what's the likelihood I would see 5.34 million cells per microliter if, in fact, the true population mean for our sample of men, again, that's men who've received this cancer drug trial, if I see an average for them of 5.34, what's the likelihood that it's, that's just noise, that really the drug has not reduced blood cells from 5.4 being the average. Well, let's take a look. How would we do this? We need some sort of tool that's going to allow us to put our 5.34 on some sort of standardized scale. And what do we know does that? Z-scores. Remember that the Z-score essentially tells us standardized values without units of how far a value is away from the mean in terms of standard deviation. So in this case, what we want to look at is a Z-score being equal to the mean that we're seeing for our data minus what we know to be the population mean divided by the standard deviation that we're seeing for our sample. Again, what we're assuming is, is if we were to repeatedly draw 500 men over and over and over again from the population and give them this prostate cancer drug, that our standard deviation would be 0.016 in terms of their red blood, 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 their mil, their red blood cell count. So, and to plug into here, we know that our mean is 5.34. Again, this is million, but we can use this number. Minus the population, which is 5.4, divided by 0 0.016. Because everything has been translated to millions, we can use these simplified versions here. 
When I do this, I end up with a z-score that is equal to negative 3.75, which means that our z our 5.34 is all the way over here somewhere. It's 3.75 standard deviations below that mean of 5.4. So what do I do with this to determine the probability that I would see a red blood cell count of 5.34 million if in fact the population mean was the same for men who received this drug trial? Well, I want to go to my z-score table and look up what a z-score of 3.75 below the mean or negative 3.75 corresponds to. And actually, you can see here that it's off the chart. The lowest we have is negative 3.49. And that corresponds to a probability of 0 0.0002, or 0.02% of the data lying to the left of that particular z-score. If you want more information about how to use the z-score, you should look at the using the z-score table video in this series as well. So if I go back to this, what this is telling me is that in my table, if, in fact, men who receive the blood cell count have no difference in their red blood cell count from the actual population, and there's no change whatsoever, then I would see a z-score of negative 3.75. Remember, 5.4 is my z-score of 0. These are z-scores, and these are the actual values up here. But 5.34 would be so far over that the amount of data left here would be 0.02%, which corresponds to that probability of 0 0.0002, 0 0.02%, which means the probability that my z-score would be equal to, and actually it's less than this because we were off the chart, remember, that the probability that my z-score is equal to negative 3.75 is less than or equal to 0 0.02%. 0, 02. This is a very, very small amount. And in my case, I would say it is highly unlikely that this particular value here of 5.34 would be seen if, in fact, 5.4 was the average for men who'd received this particular drug cancer trial. And I would therefore say that I think the drug is actually influencing their red blood cell count and lowering it somewhat. So the answer to this is the probability that the men who receive the drug still have an average red blood cell count of 5.4 million per microliter is less than 0.02 percent. It seems the drug is lowering their red blood cells. I hope this has been a helpful video on sampling distributions and thank you for listening.